아가 생길 기다. 꼭 버티낼 기다. 반드시 헤쳐나갈 기다. 정 y u n I am so excited to talk to you. You are outstanding in everything you do, but especially in this show. I first wanted to ask you about the opening credits scene because I love how the cast is dancing in the pachinko <laughs> parlor. <laughs> how was that for you? Was that fun for you? And what did you have to do for that? Well, my age, yeah, we don't dance in Korean way. You know, the, the 74 years is or is not familiar with the dancing. Especially me, I'm not a good dancer. And then Su Hyu asked me to do the dancing. So I was, my face was like this. Oh, no, I can't, I don't want to dance. Why we, do I have to, I'm the grandmother. Why do I have to dance? And then she insists. And then, yes, like you, I, after to see that credit, and yes, I loved that music and dancing was very, what, what, it's cool and it's, it t tells about the, uh, our the show uh, it's yeah. going to be. So that, that was, yes, so you, uh, you should always listen to showrunner. <laughs> I <learned the> <laughs> good lesson. advice. Yeah. Well, you're good in it. Was it fun for you while you were doing it when you finally said, okay? I was embarrassed in front of music and then we were dancing and the young kids like Solomon and the, the Jin Ha and then... Soji was just well, they have, having fun, young young ones. But me, oh, oh, how would I dance? I was really embarrassed. Well, I love your dancing. I'm so happy you did it, and I'm so excited for American audiences to see you starring in an American TV series because I know you've been in other shows like Sense Eight, but this is like your starring role in an American TV series. So I wanted to know. What about this project were you like, I want to do it? Like, did you read something in the script or you were like, yes? Yes. First, I read the script. But to me, I had, it's not proud of saying long experience, but it happened to be I had a long experience, the actor from Korea. I had career like 56 years or more than that. So anyway, <clears throat> but so to all the role are same to me. <laughs> Roles are role to me, mm -hmm. but this one, after I read the script, somehow, it's just I had an immediate connection to Sanja, mm -hmm. and I had to play this role. So mm -hmm. I went out and get the novel by Min Jin Lee, and then it gives me more desire to play this role. Her mm -hmm. strength and her determination to survive, that is uh, it's like me or somehow. So that's why. Yeah. What did, what about Sanja were, did, that you really connected to? I know you said her strength, but there, was there something in your life that you were like, wow, I really have to play this? Mm, no, it's not that. I think uh, not only that, her honesty. Back in those times, we, actually she pregnant uh, with uh, not been married. Uh, but back in those times, it's a sinful thing, you know. Uh, the girl pregnant, uh, not being married. Uh, so, she, but she was very honest about what happened to her. And but mm -hmm. she happened to meet the nice pastor who knows she's pregnant. And then she followed him to go to overseas, you know, going Japan. And then, without speak any language, mm -hmm. and. She had to survive from there, not speaking in, in not English, the, the Japanese. And then it was kind of that I can feel. I was here in back in 74 till 82. And back in my time, I couldn't speak, but speak a little bit of English, but not a word. Not I was worse than this time, I think, <laughs> at the time. So it reminds of me trying to survive in this country, not speaking uh -huh. English. And other than that, somehow I can feel that a Korean woman, I, I think any woman would be like that. If you have a children, then you have some very amazing strengths somehow 
coming from somewhere, try, mm -hmm. trying to protect my son. And she could do anything for their son. So I don't know. It's just from, I think any human being has that yeah. nature, I think. Yeah, especially women. That was so beautifully said. And Yajan, you have so much insight. And what I was thinking about watching this show is this show, the time that it spans is from the early 20th century to the late 1980s. So I wanted to ask you, how has Korea changed in that time frame? Well, I cannot remember the, that time because my mother's time, but me, I can see the change of um, still, um, I'm 74, 75, I'm not sure. I cannot even count my age. I live too long. Anyway, yes, I can see the change of Korea because uh, uh, nowadays, uh, differences. When we were, my time, like I was 20 something, then you cannot go travel with a boyfriend. That's very, <laughs> very, unless you're married. <laughs> that never happened in my time. But nowadays, uh, they always say, I'm, go I I'm going to Busan. It's like, you know, some other city, I'm going to LA with my boyfriend. It's just openly say about it. First, when I heard about maybe 20 years ago or something, they were talking about going trip with a boyfriend and then me, myself, I didn't say a thing, but I, oh, <laughs> like that. So yes, it changed a lot. Wow, what incredible insight. Thank you so much for that. This is, you know, I, want, I have so many questions for you. I first wanna know, because this is an intergenerational show, what do you think older generations and younger generations will learn about each other watching Pachinko? Hmm, you know, I'm not good at the learning, but <laughs> personally, <laughs> personally. <laughs> you are so funny. You are, you're so funny. Personally, myself, I learned, of course, through this show, through the script or through the novel. Mm, I learned personally so much, not only about the details of our history, about the human story, human being, mm -hmm. th that time, to perceive it to exist, to survive, that I learned. And well, I was playing, and then about the generation, and they, of course, I like this character because she knew what will happen to them living in foreign country as an immigrant people. But she didn't say a word. She just saying very wisely, can, can we do this and that way? And nothing's going to be changed. We still are minority, something like that. She always said that, but very reserved and then very short word mm -hmm. and not, mm, Less is more, less is more. Yes, yes, less is more. And then that I, um, that, but, but oh, we all have, still have a generation gap, like me, my experience, you know, looking at you guys and then, wow, they are very different. But, you know, we don't say a thing because like myself, my experience, I didn't say anything that girl was going to live with the boyfriend. I'm sure, yes. We did, and then it has to be changed. It has to be changed. You don't have to be uh, follow our generations, you know, what they did. Or we, we could all make a mistake, and then you try not to make a mistake like us. That's the way we're supposed to look forward to the future, not the past. So I wish uh, all the audience, if they see our show, we don't have to mm, look back. It already happened. So mm -hmm. they can look forward to future. And then we, I'm so glad that I can honor their story with this show because I learned myself a lot about the, wow. that time, so. Well, I'm so honored to like see you in this show and, and to even get the chance to talk to you and for bringing these stories to life. You've made me love and appreciate my own grandmother, even through your performance in Minari and, and you're absolutely spectacular. How, how do you feel about going back to the Oscars and how has the Oscars changed your career winning an Oscar? 
<laughs> no, nothing changed. I tried, <laughs> but I don't mind. Rotten tomato is very um, friendly to me. You are very mm -hmm. kind. Everyone who had an interview with the, from Rotten Tomato during the campaign, I didn't know that was campaigning even because I'd never been in Oscar wow. in my life. So I didn't know. I ha felt like I had too much interview with my lack of English. That was very severe time. And during the, I, I was shooting this pachinko at the time, actually, yeah. in Vancouver. But... Well, it's a, always it's been nice to be recognized and people appreciate your work, but I never pursuing award. Um, well, I didn't expect award while we were filming that Minari. We didn't, we were just uh, trying to help Isa. <laughs> and no, so I, that was just feel like, it's, how can I say it's a miracle or the, I kept saying it's accident. Who I got the the one where I got the award. It's just to me, it's an accident, because mm. uh, I, like I said, we cannot compete each other against each other because uh, we are all playing different role for the different movies. So it's, uh, I was just lucky to be <laughs> that moment. I cut that timing maybe. I mean, I'm, I'm just lucky. 학교는 다니나? 그런 개 잡고. 아버지는 내 학교 보내려고 했는데 어머니가 쓸데없다 걔가 안 됐네 너도 제대로 배웠으면 이런 중구석 진작 벗어났어 지가 여러 와 벗어나야 여는 지 아버지 어머니가 살던 고향입니다 겨우 이렇게 살겠다고 Hello, um, Minha, Minho. Minho, actually, I, um, my friend Chung Wu's brother said that you were the most handsome man at Bon Po <laughs> Middle School. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so congratulations on Pachinko. My favorite part of the show is the opening credit scene where everybody is dancing. What was it like shooting that? And who was the best dancer on set? She is the best dancer. I think if she didn't become an actress, she would have become a dancer. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed um, uh, filming that opening sequence because I got to dance for like two hours with my favorite music. So there was the there was like almost like first and the last time I really just smile and laugh and like enjoy this whole time. So yeah, it was great. It was amazing um, job. I love that. Well, it was such a joy to watch you dance and it was a joy to watch the both of you in this American TV series. What inspired you or interest the both of you to be in this show? Uh, I think story, I really to 각자의 방식으로 살아남았던 살아가야만 했던 그런 캐릭터들에 많이 좀 공감을 하고 어, 꼭 참여하고 싶다는 생각으로 참여를 하게 됐습니다. Uh, so first of all, I thought the storyline was really strong. Um, and in that storyline, there was the, uh, the different characters who in their own ways survived in those harsh uh, conditions and the really difficult times. So I could really resonate with their, I guess, resilience, and I wanted to definitely take part in the show. But in the opening sequence, I was asking myself, 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 I was asking uh, and about the opening credit, I actually asked Su Hyu, the writer, um, if we can be this happy because I'm not that, Hansu is not that kind of character. So I actually asked her if I can laugh and if I can smile like that. And I think it was the only moment or the first moment that Hansu really um, was having a lot of fun and he was all happy. So it was also a memorable experience for me too. I love that because I was talking to Kogo Nada and Justin earlier and they were saying the reason why the opening was so happy is because the show is so heavy and dark. Mm -hmm. And then I also wanted you to ask them because I think people are equally people are going to be so excited to see you. American audiences are. Would you guys want to do more 
you know, American TV series like Squid Game season two or other shows. 네, 앞으로 어떤 프로젝트이든지 사실은 저희가 모든 것들을 모든 나라의 문화와 그리고 모든 작품을 다 사실은 바라볼 수 있는 그리고 경험해 볼수 있는 시대에 살고 있기 때문에 그게 헐리우드 됐던 어디 나라가 됐던 어, 너무 좋은 이야기고 좋은 프로젝트면 어, 계속 해 나가고 싶습니다. Yes, of course. Um, I think we now live in an era where we don't have any silos between countries and um, like every country can share their culture with one another. Um, so it could be Hollywood, it could be, you know, other countries. If there's a good story and a good project, I definitely want to be in on that project. Nice. The both of you share such a beautiful romance on this film. And I was wondering, did you do anything before shooting scenes to bond or connect to bring those really intimate scenes to life? Uh, we made a lot of eye contact. <laughs> 어쨌든 현장에서 어 모두가 조금 편한 상태로 만나는 게 가장 중요하다라고 생각을 했기 때문에 음 그녀가 최대한 덜 불편할 수 있게 그리고 나 또한 그녀가 어 편해질 수 있게 서로의 이제 어떤 이야기들을 많이 했던 것 같아요. 그이 작품과는 별개의 예. 그, 그동안 뭐 미나가 그냥 어 지내왔던 이야기들 또는 뭐 내가 지금 살아가고 있는 이야기들 이런 것들을 통해서 조금 어 공감, 교감대를 형성하려고 노력을 했던 것 같아요. Yeah, so I thought it was really important to make her feel comfortable and make myself feel, com feel comfortable as well. Um, and the way to do that, I thought, was to um, share a lot of personal stories between us. So it doesn't have to be anything related to Pachinko. We would just talk amongst ourselves um, about you know, like what kind of life I have been leading, get to know each other. And that's what I try to do in order to make both of us feel comfortable. Uh, well, we had a lot of conversations talking about the scenes and about our characters and our relationship between and like We had to make a great chemistry between two of us. So yeah, um, we had a lot of conversation. And um, um, for me, like, I really do appreciate Minho that he approached to me in a very comfortable way so I can be relaxed and be just be myself and present on the set. So yeah, that's what we do before the filming. Oh, I love that. Um, I also wanted to ask you, Minha, uh, I read that you talked to your grandmother about her experience when developing your character of Sunja. Can you share maybe a story or something that she said to you that really stayed with you and helped you develop the character? Uh, well, yeah, my grandmother is 94 years old, so she really did uh, live in that era. So while I was like starting from the childhood, she told me a lot of uh, stories of herself, like how she suffered and um, how she overcame all these obstacles that is very similar to the situation that Sanja faced. It. So yeah, I heard a lot of episodes of herself, but um, so I, I, while I was listening to those episodes, I kind of wanted to figure out how would Sanja feel in this situation and that situations. But um, there was one moment that she had, uh, she told me that after I got this role, she told me that Minha, I'm really happy you can do this role but I'm also really sad that you have to do this role even if it's a performance so that was the one sentence that oh my god yeah this is it this is just whole whole story that Sanja has to contain so yeah I, I think um, I really want to share this episode that um, it was just all whole big new sentence that really attached me as an emotional ways. Wow, that hit me emotionally because yeah. it, it, is, it is so intense, right? And it was so hard for them. And yeah. it's equally really hard for us in different ways too. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it's beautiful that in a way you were telling your grandma's story. I love that. Um, Minho, you have an audition for a show in like over a decade. And I was talking to Sue Hugh and she said she didn't have to convince you to audition. You really wanted to do this. So can you tell me um, what dipping back into the audition process was like for you? 
되게 오랜만에 보는 오디션이었음에도 불구하고 오디션은 오디션인 것 같아요. 결국에는 내가 어, 나를 표현하고 선택을 받아야 되는 입장이기 때문에 그런 시작의 마음은 좀 되게 오랜만에 옛날로 돌아간 것 같아서 너무 좋은 경험이었고 다만 이제 예전에는 어, 어떤 그 스크립을 꼭 잘해야 된다 이런 것들에 되게 어, 프레셔가 있었다면 이번 같은 경우에는 그런 것보다는 그 인물의 전반적인 어떤 어, 감성을 표현하는 데좀 중점을 두고 오디션을 봤던 것 같습니다. Uh, yes, it was quite a long time since I had an audition, but you know, audition is an audition, and I had to express myself and get chosen. Um, so I felt like I was um, back in my very early years of starting this career, and I, which I really liked actually. Um, and uh, the, the the difference was that before, um, when I was auditioning for roles, I felt kind of pressure to really memorize the script. Uh, mm-hmm. itself but this time um, instead of focusing too much on memorizing the script I focus more on understanding and analyzing the character and the vibe of the character and the emotions of the character Americans love games everything becomes one <laughs> so whenever I met anyone men mostly they wanted to play the guessing game <laughs> which Asian am I a classic it's always Chinese first <laughs> Thankfully, Japanese usually comes in second. At least you only had two countries to get through. I'd be lucky if Korea made the top four. If I wasn't in the mood, I'd just nod when they said Japan. It's not entirely inaccurate, though, is it? No, not inaccurate. I love the tension between both of your characters. So I was hoping you could tell me how they view each other and what direction Justin and Kogo Nada gave you on set when you guys were shooting scenes together. We'll start with um, you, Anna. Um, I think that they have a love-hate relationship. In the beginning when we meet um, both of them together, it's, you know, she's not welcoming of him because he's coming from New York and to seal the deal that everyone's been wanting to work, uh, everyone has been working on, but has, has been unsuccessful with. And, but slowly she gets to see the person that he is. And I think the fact that um, he's also considered an outsider, he's also looked down from everyone because he's Korean and she's going through the same thing because she's female. I think that allows her to kind of be open with him. I love it. What about you, Jen? I think, um, okay, so from, I have my own opinion as Jin, but I think from Solomon's perspective, because where he's at when we first meet him in the office, he's, he's quite, I think, a ruthless financier at that time. So I think for him, he sees Naomi as an obstacle um, when we first meet him. He sees Naomi as the person who's, um, although there is this innate point of connection because of our marginalization, and very different, but there is this sense of like both of us have a chip on our shoulders. Um, and so I think there's perhaps this natural connection. I also think that, you know, there's a little bit of just like their personalities might mesh because they see themselves, the ambition that we both share is is palpable to both of us. And at the same time, I think when we first meet Solomon, we find him in a lot more of a um, blinders um, mentality of trying to get this deal done. Um, so I don't yeah. think he does a lot to help himself, you know, ingratiate himself with Naomi <laughs> at, the, at the beginning. But then as we, go, as we go along, we see a little bit more development of their understanding of each other. Oh, I love when we first meet Solomon, that scene that you do with the bosses. Okay. And you're just yeah. like, and I want it all in writing. I was like, yes, this is going to be a meme on Instagram. Everyone's <laughs> going to be posting this. It's going to be like, next time yeah. you have a meeting with your Right, mom. right, right. Yeah, I hope everybody takes that line and gets what they want. <laughs> Fight for what you're worth. Yeah, I love exactly. it. Um, Jin, how did you how did you get into character as Solomon? And what about his storyline and his connection to his family? Did you connect to? Um, Solomon feels like who I might have become if I didn't find acting for myself. If I didn't oh. find that that interest and passion and performance, um, where my job literally is to empathize and to learn about other people's stories and to be emotionally vulnerable. If I didn't have this type of job, I can imagine myself falling into this world of finance or consulting as a lot of my peers in school school did. Um, 
Mm. And obviously not to generalize on like the people that work in finance and consulting, but I just mean that there is a, there are um, parameters within different jobs that prompt people to, to behave differently or to investigate different parts or not investigate different parts of their own lives and personalities and identities. And I think had I not found acting uh, and been forced to constantly open and, and be, you know, uh, continually extend my empathy, I can imagine, I, I imagine myself, this is me, my alter ego, if it was just slightly more closed off, a bit more mask, masked up, a bit more, um, manipulative might be too strong of a word because I do think he's a good person and I'm biased, but I do think he's a good person at heart. It's more just, I think he understands how to get around and I think he understands how to um, get what he wants in a way. Um, mm -hmm. And that aspect of his personality, although I think quite different from who I am, it's not, it's not that far off if I just think about like what, is, what are his motivations, what drives him. And that very much to me makes sense of a lot of his decisions and his behavior and his choices. And then on top of that, there's a whole family aspect that you talked about where like him being the second generation, him being the first of his family's story to have opportunity and access to wealth in this way for the first time. I think, and, and you know, travel, having studied in America and worked in America, um, that is so much of my own story as well. I mean, different in a lot of specific details, but I came from Korea and Hong Kong when I was young and immigrated to America, New England mostly, um, and learned to assimilate, learned to fit in, learned to mm -hmm. try and find myself within the context where I, I didn't obviously seem to fit in in many ways. Um, mm -hmm. And that adeptness at, at sort of assimilating to wherever we are, the code switching, so to speak, that was very accessible for me. Yeah, highly relatable too. Yeah, exactly. Um, I hope so. Yeah. Anna, with Naomi, you know, she's this woman in Japan in the 1980s who's risen to the top of her company. How do you think she views the world? And did you write a backstory for her? you know, so that you were informed about how she got to where she is, essentially? Yeah, yeah. Um, I worked on it by myself and with Sue and with my mom. I'm getting information from my mom. But uh, women during that time, the companies didn't want to hire women who graduated four-year universities because they were older and they were expected to get married around 24 so that meant they wouldn't have much time at the office and so they would like they wanted to hire people who went to like what do you call the short universities where you only study for like two years um, I mean at professional schools perhaps right yeah. they they hired more women from those kind of schools so that they would enter around 20 and then stay at the company for four years and but she has she's already 28 nine when um, we see her, and so people are very judgmental towards her. And um, I spoke to my mom a lot because she was working around the 80s as well, and she's been through very similar things. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, you know, it's really hard because I also see a little bit of myself because working in Japan, especially, I've had people make comments on me because I'm a female. Working with Sue and, you know, really learning what she wanted to, um, uh, what is it, share with the world was very inspiring and I'm so happy that she wanted to tell that side of the story as well. Just hearing both of you talk, it's the, what a cool project to be a part of where you not only get to dive into like this new character, but also like your own family and, yes. and background and identity. Like it's just, it's so layered and deep and beautiful in so many ways. I can't wait for the world to see it. Yes. Jin, you get to shoot a lot of scenes with Yajan Yoon. Yes. Uh, what was that like? <laughs> she is such a legend. And did she bestow any wisdom upon you? Um, in action, she did. I mean, I, I felt like I was constantly in a master class, a very intimate master class whenever I got to work with her. Um, there's such, I wonder if it comes with age and experience or if that's just who she's always been. I mean, I've seen her work with Kim Gi-young when she first got started, you know, earlier in the uh, 20th century, what is it? Like a woman on woman of fire, I think it's, there's actually it's on YouTube, but for free you can watch her earliest films um, when she's like in her twenties, and 
even then her performances, I mean, that's what kicked her career off. But even then for me, I was like, this is a, an incredibly gifted and skilled and captivating actor. And then for me to then fast forward, you know, what is it, however many decades, I won't say for her sake, but you know, it's to then have the opportunity to witness and then even play with that, that wealth of history and knowledge and experience for me was a joy. Um, there's such depth with her simplicity and her stillness that I'm interested in for myself as an actor. Um, I was just trying to keep up, you know what I mean? She was, she was, I mean, she was so lovely to work with and off camera, she's a delight. And I think exactly as she comes off in her <laughs> interviews um, and yeah, I'm, I'm so grateful to have, to have had this, this amazing opportunity to cross paths with YJ, but also, you know, get to know her as a person as well. Sue, I, I love this show so much. I was looking up uh, different Korean words because I was like, I want to learn Korean. And what I thought was so beautiful is that one of the greetings in Korean really is a question that means, are you at peace? Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, that's so cool. So I just wanted to say hi and are you at peace knowing that you're bringing this highly anticipated show <laughs> to a major streamer? I don't know. I mean, I don't know yet if it feels, it's still a little bit surreal. Like I, a part of me, someone's, I'm waiting for someone to say, wait, we're not done yet. Um, it's been such a long journey that to think it's actually over the first season is, um, I'm struggling accepting it. Okay, well, it's coming, and I'm so excited for the world to see it. And also, your nail your nail color is stunning. Oh, um, thank you. <laughs> sick. I want to first ask you, and I know you've been asked this before, but I think it's an important question to ask. You know, the book is in English, but the show yeah. is in Japanese, Korean, and English. Why was it important to tell this story on screen through those native languages? You know, I think it was so important that whatever language the character spoke had to be the language that we heard. I mean, not only is it that you want the best actors for the role, right? And why would you want to hamper an actor with a language he or she is not comfortable with? But most importantly, I think the world really needs to hear people speak, right? And there's no way we're going to be able to understand, especially that divide between how the struggle between switching from Korean to Japanese unless you told the language. For example, if it was all in English, you wouldn't understand when a character code shifted to another language. So that just felt really crucial. You know, it was interesting when I was, there was a scene in episode one where there's a bunch of men talking in the pachinko parlor. And I just thought, this is so, I'm so connected to these people because if I was actually in the room, I wouldn't be understanding what mm -hmm. they're saying. And so I felt, I just wanted you to know as someone watching, I felt so connected and almost like I got an inside look, you know, at this world that I wouldn't oh, otherwise thank know. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really, I truly felt that. Um, so I hope you're so proud of yourself. I, I watched an interview you did last week where you said, you know, you knew how challenging and, and epic this is. And how did it challenge you? Oh, in so many ways. Um, I mean, just digging into all that history, right? Like having to figure out like what life was like in 1915, what life was like in 1923, 1931. And then what that happened, by doing that, I uncovered so much of my own family's history, right? You're like, wait a minute, my grandparents went through that, you know, my parents went through that. And it, that was a complicated emotion, those were complicated emotions that dug up in that process. The translation of these scripts, not just into, you know, Japanese and Korean, but also into all these dialects within Japanese and Korean, that was, that was a big headache. Um, and, you know, shooting, it was a very ambitious shoot, it was, it was a big shoot and just the bar was so high, right? And all of us saying, that's not good enough yet. We can do better. That's not good enough. We can do better until we got to that place where we're like, yes, we got it. You definitely got it. Uh, I was watching another interview you did where you said you use the Godfather as a reference. And I was like, hmm, let's, let's ask Sue, you know, what does she love about 
the Godfather and how did that influence the intergenerational story and the family story in Pachinko? Yeah, so I watched The Godfather when I was very young at 12 years old and I really do credit The Godfather with being the spark of like, wait a minute, people make movies, like people tell stories like that, what is that? And for me it's very much the inciting action of like, this is what I want to do. But when I think about Godfather 2 especially, you know, it's very hard to cross cut periods, it's very hard to cross cut past and present and make it feel like one conversation. And I think what that movie, the second one movie does, especially because Michael goes back to his homeland, and it's like, ah, what if we did that with Pachinko, right? You know, what if we told that structure? And I think, I think it was the right decision. You told it seamlessly too, because, you know, as someone that watches a lot of stuff, there's stuff that takes place over different time periods. Yeah. And I, I'm the worst. I can never follow it. I know, <laughs> like, where are we? And, and that never happened when I was watching Pachinko. Um, oh, good. So, yeah. Really, really awesome. So exciting to see Min Ho in this. Yeah. You know, he's massive. And I read that he hadn't done an audition in a decade. So how did you convince him to audition for this? And, and tell me about the casting process. We didn't have to convince him. He wanted it bad enough, you know. And so I think he was just, he worked so hard, you know, and he really wanted to just tap into a different facet of his acting. And I really think when people see Pachinko and they see what he brings to Hanzu, I think no one will see Minho the same way. I'm so excited to be able to see him. Do you, when people are done watching this, they're going to be wondering, you know, is a second season coming? What stories do you want to tell, you know, if there is a season two? Well, I mean, the show is meant to be ongoing, so, you know, fingers crossed. But it's just, when I think about season one, I love these characters so much, right? You, you, you want to see what happens to them, and I hope we get that opportunity. Nice. And going back to casting for a second, how did you land on the three different actresses for Sinja? Yeah, I mean, because that's that's hard, right? To like make one person have three people be one person. We decided not to force it, meaning let's not cast trying to make them look alike, right? Let's not cast trying to, and also let's not make their performances mimic or match one another. When you have actors of that strength, what you're looking for is someone who can embody the soul of this character. And once we had that, then you, I knew they were going to be fine. 누가 선자 씨에게 평생 살아온 고향을 떠나서 새로 시작하지 않는다면 그럴 수 있겠어요? And people like us, we don't need to walk in our family's shadows. 무슨 일이가 손톱이 다 부러지고 내 안은 부족한 거 하나 없이 키울 Hello, hey. hi Justin and Kogo Nada. What a pleasure watching the show. I was like, this show is so epic in scope and yet intimate in tone. And the entire time I was watching it, I was like, how did they do that? Like, they're just so good at what they do. But uh, so congratulations. My first question is about the opening credit scene, the cast dancing in the pachinko parlor, because I think we live in a world where everyone just skips the opening credits. And I didn't skip once every single episode. I was so excited. How long did that take to choreograph and what all went into that? Do you have insight on that? You were there on that <laughs> yeah. day, right? Uh, so, okay, so th basically the show is very emotional. And it's, it's a very, it can be heavy at times. So like, I think it's uh, the thought process is to have something that uh, starts with some levity. Um, you know, so like, <laughs> I think there's a tempting thing, an obvious choice for a show like this to do some like, you know, strings, orchestral, sort of sweeping music with like landscapes and stuff. But I thought this was a, a much more clever way of, of getting into it where, where it starts off on just a, you know, a rocket ship of joy first before we get into all the, the, the difficult things we tackle. I love that. I love that sentiment. Kogonata, what was it like shooting that? Were you there that day? Um, I don't think I was there. I think I was shooting another scene. Uh, but I think, or, but... Uh, Maybe not because I think my DP did Anton shoot a little bit and Florian. Yeah, so there it was like a group effort. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a group effort, and I think yeah, a yeah. lot of it was just freestyled. I think yeah, that yeah. like they just let them. Obviously, they they, they shot it on 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 a K set uh, at the the Pachinko Ch parlor. Yeah. But um, they just let them. Kind of free form, yeah. Yeah, and let then them dance. Put it together, dude. yeah. <laughs> I can't wait for the world to see it. But Justin, like you said, this show has 
a lot of heavier themes. And I was thinking about how this is the first time that both of you are directing a television series, which I thought is really interesting. So I'd love to hear a little bit about that. But what did the both of you learn about, you know, Korean identity and, and Korean history while making the show? Yeah, I mean, you know, I because of my own family history, which uh, intersects th this story, um, I was familiar, but it really was about fleshing out that history and really feeling it in the context of, uh, you know, because if you're a kid and as you're growing up, it, it still feels abstract and you're still trying to imagine the stories you're hearing, but suddenly kind of being a part of it and being in within certain kinds of geography and location and feeling the costumes. And, um, you know, it was really about learning the, the texture of the history, if that makes any sense. You know, that for me, that's what yeah. I walked away from is like really feeling it in, under, you know, in my body almost. I love the I love that feeling the costumes line. That's that's incredible. Justin, what about you? You know, what did you take away from this? and learn about Korean identity? Uh, you know, on a, just a human level that, 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 that you know, we're just, uh, we're just a lot, so much more alike than different as, as, a, as a human race. You know, and I think uh, great storytelling is in its specificity, you know, you know un, sort of like exposes how much more we're alike um, when I, you know, I, I, I love to watch film and whether it's an Iranian story or, or, you know, uh, a story from Sweden, you know, you, you just, you watch these films and you walk in their shoes for however long your you, the, the, the film or the television show is. And there's so much to, to, to relate with that, that for this show, uh, I was very much focused on, on the, the human elements. Um, mm -hmm. a lot of times that, 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 uh, that we all can relate to. Yeah, well, that really shines through. And and the first thing I thought of was how when you were saying that, like the different stories is when I watched Minari, you know, Ye Jung Yoon made me love my own grandmother so much. And, and it is funny how we can see each other in other stories reflected and we are so much more alike than we are different. What was it like directing Oscar winner Ye Jung Yoon? Well, She's uh, hilarious, it seems. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I did this one scene with all these rain towers, and and I, I made her, and it was in the dead of winter, and she was pr she was pretty mad at me, dude. She got really <laughs> angry because I made her stand in the the rain and in the water too long, and I got a call, and and I just had to get on my knees and beg for forgiveness. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, she, she's a, such a legend, even before the, you know, she was sort of introduced to the Western world, you know, she's been this yeah. legend in Korea. And so mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's daunting, but also, you know, she's so mesmerizing. I mean, I got to shoot like an earthquake scene and big scenes and her just sitting yeah. at a table talking was the maybe sometimes my, the most compelling thing I, I was doing as an actor, just putting that camera on her face and letting her play all these different notes. It, it was really sort of as a director was a real honor to kind of see this legend play these notes on her face and in her eyes. It, you know, I, I was really like uh, stunned by her um, abilities as an actor. 100%. So beautifully said. She is so absorbing and, and yeah. she just brings you in, you know? And another thing that brought me in while watching this show is I really love elements and I love the element of water. And I wanted to ask the both of you about shooting in and around water and specifically that scene of Sunja diving. Mm. How, you know, how did you shoot that? And tell me about using water as an element to tell this story. Yeah, well, you know, Korea is a peninsula and Japan is an island, so it is a part of our landscape. You know, it's it's our, our geography. Um, so and it was so well, water was so integral to, to the script. And um, so we knew that that was just going to be a part of the, the element, one of the elemental parts of the story. The diving was a combination of really be on a coast and then obviously using a tank as well. And our actress, she was such a good swimmer and a good sport about uh, everything. Uh, so that that was, yeah, it took, a, you know, a full day to kind of do some uh, underwater scenes with her um, and she was brilliant um, yeah and then just you know dealing with the the travel uh, on the boat and all of that was um, yeah it was just a big part of our yeah. our production absolutely and I love that water scene of um, the laundry because you you shot that so differently 
and mm, you, you go yeah. with the three the three sisters. oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah upstream yeah. and and i thought that was incredible yeah yeah no no i think water is really important you know even um when we shot you know uh at the end of episode four with Solomon and, and older Sanja, you know, yeah. um, I wanted to bring back in the water. So yeah. I, I had it rain, you know, in the script, it, 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 it they didn't have rain, but I felt mm-hmm. like if it was raining at the same time yeah. for both of them, it connects them in an emotional way. And also that she's going to step into, I also think it's also just, I love, I love the visual of like, you're, you're stepping into water, but it's also like raining from the heavens. Um, and there's something I think very mm. spiritual about about water, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, the, how long can you guys hold your breath underwater? <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's not a real question. <laughs> that was wow. I mean, everything you guys are saying, it's like an orchestra. It's like a symphony coming out of your mouth. It's like oh. you guys were trained to do this forever and ever. I also want to ask you, aside from shooting with water, food, right? Food can make us feel really seen. I'm Dominican. I remember seeing John M. Chu shoot food and in, in the Heights. And I was like, mm, yeah, oh my, yeah. I got, I got chills. I was like, I've never seen this Dominican meal in, <laughs> in a show like this. People are going to be so hungry watching this. The food is so beautiful. Tell me about crafting. Why was it so important to get those shots and, and crafting the food as a character in this show? It's, it's an extension of, of it's symbolic, right? You know, um, and it's it's history and it's it's just just uh we can all relate with our our ethnic food right but um i don't know like even in uh episode four when she's the the rice is so expensive Mm -hmm. the white rice that that it's a such a treat and it's a mother's heart you know it's a mother's heart so it's the last gesture and and uh you know she could do for a departing daughter and 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 I think there's just so much love in the way you can shoot things like that, and and we all, we all know what it it feels like when when a mother cooks a, a even if it doesn't taste good, you know, a, a beautiful meal for you because it's all heart. Yeah, yeah I mean, you when you said which you should really be doing the interview because you, or you should be the interviewee because. Um, yeah. You said it was epic in scope, intimate in tone. I was like, yeah. oh, why can't I say that? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to steal that from you. But yeah. the, you know, um, it's such a big story. But when you, food immediately grounds you and makes it so everyday and intimate, and we all have that relationship with food. That no matter how big the world events are, when you're sitting at a table and eating food, it it, it becomes this sort of intimate thing that is universal. We all understand it, and that daily food is the thing that. We, we will recall and it becomes emotional uh, and whether you see it in the heights where you know we like when i see a bowl of rice kimchi this you know that setup you know it's like oh i'm back at my house and and so there's something really intimate about food that mm-hmm. that's was uh, a big part of the show i think 